Learn more about how your child can become a junior science machine and fall in love with everything about science coming up on my episode of That's My Biz on bizlinks.tv. That's My Biz is sponsored by Visita Live Site and Constant Contact. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of That's My Biz. I am really excited today. So I'm going to get you through the beginning part because I want to get into this interview. We want to remind you that you know we always enjoy bringing to you the wonderful businesses, organizations, and associations that we meet when we're out there networking because we want you to know about them. And this one you're going to want to know about for sure. We want to remind you, you can watch this episode again at www.bizlinks.tv. You can also check us out on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash bizlinks TV. And don't forget the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash bizlinks TV. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can get updates about when our episodes are being released so that you can see them as soon as they're out there. So I want to dive right in because I have a special guest with us today, Mr. Michael Green, and his company is Science for Everyone. But what most people affectionately know him as, or who most people affectionately know him as, is the science machine. Okay, now right now he doesn't quite look like the science machine, but we're going to show you exactly Exactly what he looks like so that you won't miss out because you're going to know so much about this. So first I want to get into uh, when we talk about science for everyone. Now tell everyone a little bit about that. Well, you know, science for everyone was actually created as a way to get kids interested in science. When I initially graduated from college, I went to work at the Sidetrack Museum mm -hmm. and I went downstairs one day to watch a science show that was taking place for a field trip that had come to the museum and I, I'll never forget it, I was sitting in a row with five and six year olds for about... <laughs> 30 minutes and I just lost my mind like oh, you know, I, I couldn't believe some of the experiments that the presenter was doing and I realized immediately I ran upstairs to the president's office and I said we need to create a program that we take to schools mm -hmm. because the only kids that we touch are kids who come here mm -hmm. and we were just missing lots of kids and mm -hmm. she looked at me and she said why don't you make it and wow. um scared me to death but uh <laughs> you know it was, she thought it was a great idea I thought it was a great idea and yeah. so I kind of dove in and that's kind of how it was originally created wow and from what we hear you were the right guy to get this going and I love that because I used to enjoy sidetrack and they don't exist anymore so it's good to know there's a program that really goes out and meets the kids where they are so you don't have to worry about them having to to come to sidetrack and now because I want to share because what you do is you do these different programs in the schools and you receive best school assembly in Georgia for eight consecutive years. I did. I did. So those out there who are watching, I know many of our uh, viewers are business owners, many of you all are parents, many of you all are educators, you want to make sure that you get the information on how you can bring the science machine in. So make sure that you get your pencils and your paper out so that you can just have uh, a good time to learn about this. So now, so we've got, you know, how you created it. So then what was the next step? Because we also have a lot of business owners and they like to know, you know, just how the businesses grow and develop. Kind of what was the next step in getting into the schools? Well, it's interesting that you say that because I initially thought that my best course of action would be to have a conversation with the superintendents. Okay. And if the superintendents gave me the green light and I had mm -hmm. their recommendation, then I could go to any principal and mm -hmm. say, look, I've got this great program. But actually, it was more of a principal to principal conversation. Okay. And um, I had to basically go in and convince each principal that it was something that was worthy because the school is ultimately the one who's going okay. to pay for it. And uh, unless the superintendent mandated and also paid for the program, he couldn't say you have to have it at your school. And so it was really just developing the relationships with one principal at a time. And then I'd say to one principal, look, at the end of the show, when they're at their height of their excitement and they're seeing their kids so excited yeah. about science, I'll say, look, I need you to do me a favor. You know, I need you to call that principal that you have a relationship with mm -hmm. that you can call and say, hey, I'm bringing my kids over this weekend. We're going to hang out. You know, call that okay. one for me yes. and just say, hey, you give this guy 10 minutes. Right. You know? I love that. And as a result of that relationship building, one principal calling one principal and some call mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. it just started to grow and expand. And, uh, I love that because that is something that, um, you know, we share all the time because sometimes people just don't ask for the business. They don't ask for the referrals. So you heard one of the first things is when you got to qualify, you have to then find out who the right contacts are, who the decision makers, and build those relationships. But then after you get out and you service them, get them excited about your service or your product, 
ask for the referrals. Absolutely. It's that simple. Get more people and you turn your clients into your sales force for you. And, and there really is no better sales force. And one of the things that I found that works really well for me is I have that conversation mm -hmm. right when the show has ended. Mm -hmm. You know, because right then yeah. they're they're up here in right. terms of their excitement, right. and that's the best time to have that conversation. Right. And they're willing to do what you'd ask, and they're more than happy to do it. Yeah, I I, I love that. So everyone, I, that's a great note for your business, and regardless of what business you have, that's the time to do it. We tell people that so often too when it comes to even getting testimonials yeah. that that's the time to get it when they're excited and you can feel that energy for it. Absolutely. So now, so with the schools now, are there certain ages? Are are certain grades that you only do? Actually, I usually do the entire school. Okay. Uh, whether it's pre-K through fifth grade or kindergarten through fifth grade. Elementary okay. is more of my niche. Okay. But I also present at the middle school and high school level. Okay. Uh, there's a funny story. I actually got called to do to present at the Fulton County Science and Engineering mm -hmm. Fair. And I thought it was like one of the county science Olympiads where I'm the right. presenter while they're judging all of the mm -hmm. science projects. And so I got to the event and the, they had the stage and the curtains and you know, I'm back there setting up, mm -hmm. and the lady came back five minutes before the show started. She said, are you ready, Mr. Green? I said, I'm mm -hmm. all set. You know, the Curtains opened up. It was the top 100 high school students in Fulton County. Wow. And I was just like, oh, oh boy, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. And uh, immediately, you know, I kind of remembered something that my mom said to me a long time uh -huh. ago. And she said, if you've never seen a pickle glove, I don't care how old you are. It's wow. awesome. Wow. And so I sat there and went through the presentation, <laughs> and it was one of the best presentations mm -hmm. that I had. The energy in the room was mm -hmm. amazing, but more importantly, I think it gave me that confidence to know that I can do this show in front of anybody. Wow. You know, and uh, that, was, that was a great day. Wow, that, great that day. is awesome. Thank you for sharing that story. So now, Michael, one of the things uh, that, you know, we've been kind of talking about what it is, and y'all already seen some of the personality come out of the science machine, even though he's not in his science machine gear. But, um, of course, what you're doing throughout this, the whole program, you're doing different experiments and all of that. So maybe give us a sneak peek into to one of them. Well, you know, one of, one of my favorite experiments, I actually begin every show with okay. this. And um, it, it's a way to just completely capture the imagination okay. of the children. And when I initially come out and they see me as the science machine, it's laughter, complete pandemonium. Mm -hmm. They're laughing at everything. And it, as soon as they see this. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> then, then, and that yeah. was hot, too. I felt <laughs> And so as a result, I'm able to capture their attention yeah. very quickly. And now they're absolutely engaged. Wow. And, and that's really the most important yeah. thing. If you can hold a child's attention, yeah. you can teach them anything. Yeah. And, wow. and that, I, I've come to realize that. I believe in that you know, so wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. and, and it, I don't care how old you are, right. you know, and, and that works on the opposite side of mm -hmm. the spectrum, mm -hmm. too, and so many of our youth have their attention being captured by things that aren't positive, right. and so one of the biggest challenges I think that educators have today is to figure out a way to get around all of the clutter that's mm -hmm. distracting their mm -hmm. students, and, you know, unless you do that, yeah. you know, you're, you're fighting against all those outside influences, yeah. and science for everyone is, I think, we're one of the best at yeah. doing that. Yeah. I really do. and, and I love that because, you know, because of course when you see it happen, you're thinking, oh, that's magic. But no, it's science. You know, so that's talking right. a little bit about, I mean, because what all magic technically is some type of science, some type of... Without the explanation. Exactly. You're talking about what your brain sees and what really happens. And so well, I love Well, that. one of the interesting things about this is, well, at the conclusion of each experiment, mm -hmm. I explain the applicable okay. math and science principles. Fantastic. So like you said, the kids won't leave thinking that they saw a magic right. show. Right. And, uh, you know, but one of the great things, I think, science for everyone not only touches on science, it mm -hmm. also delves into math. Mm -hmm. I show the older kids how to multiply faster than a calculator. Mm -hmm. um, it also delves into the language art side of it too. And so, you know, I have the, the it, it's amazing. I had a group of 200 kindergartners. Mm -hmm. And so I was explaining what happened here. And I said, on this side of the paper, I coated the paper with a chemical called nitroglycerin. Okay. Let me hear you say nitroglycerin. Okay. 200 kindergartners, perfect enunciation. Wow. Mm -hmm. The principal's jaw hit the floor. <laughs> you know, and a lot of times because you don't challenge your children mm -hmm. or your mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. to say difficult words or even mm -hmm. words that they're not going to be exposed to till three or four, mm -hmm. five years later, mm -hmm. just to have it in their memory bank yeah. so that the next time they hear it, it's like, oh, right. I've heard that. Yeah. You know, on the other side of the paper, I coat it with a chemical called cellulose. Okay. And when you set it on fire, it creates a chemical reaction. Okay. And as the paper starts to burn, I know it looks like it's disappearing, mm -hmm. but it's actually being reduced down to particles wow. that are so small that the human eye can't see it. 
Wow. And so uh, it's, it's awesome. And, wow. you know, it's it makes just... me want to start doing this. Wow. I, mean, I, cool, I mean, how no cool is that? Ash. <laughs> Woo! I'm about to go get my green apple wig. I mean, it's just. <laughs> It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. I, I, I love that because there's all this learning that happens. So now tell me also, what's the experience? Because also parents and the teachers are, are in the auditorium as well and, and enjoying. Kind of what are the reactions you get from them? Well, one of the things, I think at the time when I named the company Science for Everyone, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that it really is science mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as engaged as the teachers are, or I'm sorry, as, as engaged as the, the mm -hmm. students are, the teachers are just as engaged, wow. and they'll sit there, you know, and they can't believe some of the things are taking place, and I think that translates back to the classroom mm -hmm. where they say, wow, I can be so much more creative with my students, yeah. you know, that that's what's going to hold their attention, mm -hmm. and I had a conversation mm -hmm. with, uh, I used to do a lot of teacher workshops, mm -hmm. and I said, look, you want to be the favorite teacher in the school? Mm -hmm. Every day when your students initially come into class, just do one experiment. Okay. You know, I don't care mm -hmm. if you teach language, art, yeah. language arts or social studies, yeah. you know, do one experiment, engage them, and they will run to your class every single wow. day, and they'll want to learn, okay. you know, and, and it, that's kind of, it, it's exciting. Well, I, I love that, and I love the idea. So now tell me, too, for, for those teachers, how do they kind of learn a little bit of what you do? Um, or learn some of those experiments so that they can keep them engaged on a regular basis like that. Absolutely. Well, one of the best parts about science for everyone, probably 99% of the experiments that I do, they can completely reproduce them in the classroom, and the cost to reproduce them is very minimal. Wow. You know, most of my supplies I get at Kroger. Wow. You know, the yeah. sodium polyacrylate you mm -hmm. can get inside of a baby's diaper. Okay. You know, okay. A, a new diaper. Okay. Don't, don't get an old <laughs> diaper. You know, but, but you know, speak, I, I didn't show you my sodium No, polyacrylate. we're going to do that one after the break. I got to hold them because I wanted y'all to keep watching. Wait till y'all see my sodium <laughs> polyacrylate. But, you know, but it, it's very affordable. And then there's other experiments that really require nothing. Wow. You know, if, if you wow. take your shoulder and you stand against the wall mm -hmm. and you put your foot against the wall, mm -hmm. it's impossible to lift your other foot off the floor. Wow. And so it's just you know, simple experiments. And uh, science is all around you. I love that. So, y'all, I'm about to go do that. So we're going to take <laughs> a commercial break. I'm going to put my shoulder and my foot against the wall to see if I can lift them. I'm going to come back She's and let you stuck. all know what happens. So everyone, we'll be right back. How does your small business stay top of mind with customers? From deals that bring them in with an offer, to social media promotions that turn fans into customers, to events that engage and create buzz, to emails that keep loyal customers coming back. Our easy to use tools will keep you in front of your customers. Visita provides a complete business calendar, fully integrated with your client scheduling experience. You can view and manage your daily schedule and any upcoming meetings, and most importantly, schedule new appointments and follow-ups with your clients. Using Visita Calendar for client scheduling will save you time and deliver a better service to your clients. Visita Calendar automatically syncs with your existing calendar on Google, Outlook, iPhone, and more. Okay, so I gotta try this, right? Okay. So, okay, so you said put. Put okay. your left foot, your left shoulder against okay. the wall. Okay. And put your left foot against the, the wall. Left foot against the wall. Now try to lift okay. your right foot in the air. I got more weight. Than you're, wait, you're stuck. <laughs> and what happens is when you, <laughs> when you put your shoulder against the wall and you put your okay. foot against the wall, okay. uh -huh. your center of gravity gets pushed against the wall. Oh, so it's okay. impossible to right. get that foot in the air. Right. So it's not just you. I just figured I'm going to defy this, right? So I'm going to figure out some way. If I start this way, that doesn't work either. Absolutely. So, okay. That's crazy, right? Science is everywhere. Right. I love it. I love it. Science. For everyone, because see, yeah. I want to trick it. I want to go. You can even try to lift your foot with your hand, <laughs> hands and it still won't come. And if you, ever then meet, I come off the wall. if you ever meet someone and their foot is in the air, uh -huh. either their shoulder or their foot came off the wall. Okay, right, because I'm sitting here going, I'm going to trick it, but i got to come off the wall to do it. Cool. I love it. I love it. Hi, everyone. We are back. We have been having a good time. We had some fun during the break, too. I told you I was going to try it, and I tried it, and I didn't accomplish much of You're anything. Stuck. You're stuck. I was stuck on the wall. So. <laughs> but so, now, Michael, we, the science machine, I'll tell you, Michael Green, the science machine, I love it. So, we've seen one experiment. 
So now he alluded to another experiment that he has for us. I want you all to see this one. This one was a lot of fun. So now tell me what, what the chemical is again. Well, this is, this is great. This is called sodium polyacrylate. Okay, sodium polyacrylate. And, and one okay. of the things that's so funny about this experiment, when I do this experiment at the schools, mm -hmm. I'll have some sodium polyacrylate already in the cup. Okay. And so I'll take it and just put it. It looks like baby powder. Okay. But the kids don't know that it's in there. Oh, okay. And so they'll come out, and I'll say... Are you all aware of the equilibrium point? And they'll look at me like, what is the You're equilibrium right. point? And I'll say, well, if you pour some water into a cup, mm -hmm. if you flick it right in the middle, but you got to be in the middle to find the equilibrium point. And if you flick it, you can lock it. <laughs> and the kids sit there like, <gasps> Yeah, and it's hilarious, and so I'll tell them when they go home, mm -hmm. make sure they show their mom how they can lie. Yeah, you know? yeah, I love but, that. But I do come back and explain the sodium polyacrylate absorbed all the liquid. Okay. And it actually turns it into a solid. Wow. And it, it, it feels like jello, see that? Oh, yeah. And you know what it really feels like? Well, this is the same stuff they put on the inside of a baby's diaper. So, you know, when a baby has to use the bathroom, mm -hmm. it absorbs all the moisture, right. keeps the baby from getting wet. So. Wow, wow. If you've got kids, you already know Who knew? That. So now you get to go get some. So to do this experiment, so for a kid to do this experiment at home, do they just need to go get... Um, just get some diapers. some diapers. Some new ones. <laughs> Not the used ones. Get some new ones. Yeah. And just cut it open, pour some into wow. a cup, pour some water. And one of the things that's really interesting about this, if you were to get a lot of salt... Mm -hmm. And pour it, you know, if you put this back in the cup okay. and you pour some salt in there, mm -hmm. it'll turn back into liquid. Wow. And it's the salt composition in the urine that actually breaks down the diaper. Okay. So wow. Cool. So now y'all know the inside diaper. Because I've seen Excuse YouTube videos. Excuse the urine videos. reference. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just keeping it real. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I've seen YouTube videos as well, and Absolutely. they were using the same uh, chemical or open up the diapers to Absolutely. put in plants Absolutely. in the soil. The as a fertilizer, it, it keeps the water in the soil yeah. in the root system longer and so it's a great way to take advantage of that especially when you have you know like conditions where it doesn't rain very wow. often wow wow i love that so i'm also a botanist <laughs> <laughs> you all really got to see him in character <laughs> i love this so now the the program sound great and i can only imagine the the magnitude of what this is like on stage because you're there with the props all this you're using the students getting them involved and everything so what does something like this cost well you know that's one of the best parts about science for everyone you know when, when I, I decided when i initially started mm -hmm. the company 15 years ago i said i will never have a principal look at me and say i can't afford it okay you know okay. and so it, it's anywhere from a dollar a student mm -hmm. to two dollars a student okay and and then when i travel it may increase up to three or four dollars okay. a student but that just depends upon yeah. the distance because yeah. i do go so how far do you go I go all over the country, wow. all over the country. Actually, I've been to the Bahamas to present. There was a lady who was a teacher at a school in Clayton County. Uh -huh. She was from the Bahamas, and she moved back home to open her own private school. Mm -hmm. And she happened to be in on the planning committee when they were talking about what they were going to do for Science Week. And she kind of said, I'm, I'm sitting here listening. And unless you call the science machine, right. we're really not doing anything. And so one day I get a call from the Bohemian Ministry of Education. Wow. Like, I, wow. I, I, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was one of my friends playing a prank on me. And so when they called back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it, that, that's a great opportunity, too. And, and, and it helps me realize yeah. that I, the reason science for everyone is, yeah. is I, I think what sets it apart yeah. is the science machine can relate to any audience. Okay. You know, I, I've done shows in some of the toughest neighborhoods in mm -hmm. Atlanta, okay. and the kids sat there with this mm -hmm. look of fascination and amazement on their faces, mm -hmm. completely fi fixated on learning for 45 yeah. minutes, you know, and then the next day I was in the best neighborhoods in Roswell, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and I'll never forget, I'm dry, I drove to one school and the sign said, home starting in the low 1.8 million. Oh, the low 1.8 million. Okay. You know, and we got in there and we had an incredible time. I did a show at the Georgia International Convention Center mm -hmm. for 350 Indian children. Wow. You know, at the Jaina Conference. And it was, it was, it was just magical. And, and, and science for everyone is able to, it doesn't matter the race, it doesn't yeah. matter the age, it doesn't matter what the demographic is. Mm -hmm. Somehow the science machine can reach in there, yeah. grab that attention you know, become friends with the entire audience, and right. we just have fun, and we learn at the same time. Right. That's the really the blessing, when yeah. I sit back and think about how he put this thing together, mm -hmm. you know, it's just that, that connection. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so tell me, 
because you can already see the wonderful benefits of this program, but share with me what's the main takeaway that you want the students to have after they see one of your shows? I, I think the main takeaway is I can be a scientist too. Okay. You know, I, I think for so long there's been this stereotypical mm -hmm. image of what a scientist look, lo looks mm -hmm. like. For so long, little girls were never even pictured right. as scientists, you yeah. know, and um, little black boys, you yeah. know, to, to have a black man in your school talking about right. math and science, yeah. it just mm -hmm. doesn't really happen mm -hmm. that often. And um, so for a little kid to look at me when he's walking mm -hmm. out the room and he says, science machine, I'm going to be a scientist. Wow. And I'll look at him and say, man, you're going to be an astrophysicist. And he'll look at me like, yeah. <laughs> and he has no idea what it is, you know. But, you know, I'll walk at another girl, look at her, she's like, I'm going to be a scientist too. And I'll look at her and say, you know what? I just had a feeling that one day you're going to swim with the whales. You're going to be an awesome marine biologist. Wow. You know, just to put that in their yeah. head and that yeah. little seed and to yeah. just, you know, in a lot of schools I go back to year after year yeah. after year and to watch the kids grow and to watch that mm -hmm. seed grow and they yeah. still want to be scientists mm -hmm. and they're even more interested now. Yeah. And to know that I played a small part mm -hmm. in that is really humbling. Wow. It wow. Really is. That is special, I'll tell you. So now, is there a minimum or a maximum number of students that you'll you go out to see? No, it's funny. I, I, I do a lot of birthday parties. Okay. The best birthday parties ever. I and, 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 yeah. And, and really, the, the, the reason I say that, everyone, usually at your birthday party, you have somewhere between yeah. 10 and 30 kids. Yeah. You know, so everyone gets a chance to mm -hmm. participate. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I go to the schools and I'm doing a show for two or 300 kids mm -hmm. at a time, everyone does get a chance to come up on stage, mm -hmm. even though everyone still has a good time. But at the birthday party, it's so intimate. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of programs at churches where I'm yeah. able to align the experiments to nice. things from the Bible. Mm. And so instead of talking about how Moses parted the Red Sea, yeah. you tell the kids he had some sodium polyacrylate in his, you know, in his <laughs> robe. You know, and as he was running through, he just threw it out there. And, <laughs> and then you come back and give him the lesson, you know, right, Exodus right. 14, 20. You just want to yeah. throw that out. But, you know, <laughs> And so the program works on so many different levels, yeah. you know, so I've done it for as little as five children mm -hmm. and as many as, you know, 750. Wow, wow. I mean, my mind is already working and hopefully yours is too because I'm sitting here, I'm thinking our next big event that we have for businesses, we're going to, well, we need to bring you in just for something different because cause the adults, you can tell you're going to have just as much fun as well. So, and then let me ask you a little bit about the persona of the science machine. Now, just where did that come from? You know, I, I think it's a combination of a lot of different things that I've kind of seen throughout the course of my life. Um, I've always loved the comedy of Richard Pryor mm -hmm. and, you know, Eddie Murphy. Okay. And so I think it's kind of like a combination of that. And I love Jerry Seinfeld mm -hmm. and Kramer. And so it's kind of like the, oh, I'm just kidding, okay. you know. <laughs> but I've always, you know, I've always been kind of nutty myself. And so it's funny. Most people don't see me even mm -hmm. like this. I'm right. usually pretty reserved. Mm -hmm. and, and once the hair comes on and the green <laughs> afro wig comes into effect, it's a whole different game. Yeah. But wow. I, I think it's just, you know, different exposures that I've had throughout the course of my life. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I think exposure is everything. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So tell me, what's one of your most memorable programs or moments in one of your programs? Wow. There's so many. The, the, the most, well, one of the funniest was there's this... He must have been in first or second grade. Okay. And he had been itching to get on stage. Okay. I mean, every time I'd say, I need a volunteer, ah, okay. you know. <laughs> and so I finally called him up, and he was so excited. And so I pulled out this balloon, okay. and I told him what I was going to do was fill the balloon with water. And then I pulled out a lighter, and I told him I was going to set it on fire. Ooh. And he got so excited, he started jumping <laughs> up and down, and he just all over himself. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. no. I so said, it's okay. We got some sodium polyacrylate, and we just sprinkled it right on the floor. It was awesome. And the show kept going. I and love it. Was, it. You know, it's I love it. You know, the show must go wow. on. And, and that was perfect, too, because then he didn't have the, the embarrassment of Absolutely. it all. It just it remained fun. Absolutely. So that was, that was good. I just love this. Everyone out there, you all know, I don't even have to tell you at this point, that you need to make sure that you experience this for yourself, for your schools, for your kids for whatever events there are that you have, you want to make sure that you reach out to Michael Green, the science machine with science for everyone. Um, before I close, I want to ask you one last thing. What's next? Wow. Well, I, I guess my, my big, big picture, I, I got a call about three months ago okay. from a TV producer. And she kind of introduced herself. And, you know, I'm just sitting there like, trying to be calm like, 
you know, but inside I'm like, ah! you know, and, and she, she said to me, you know, I'm sweating just thinking about it. She said, have you ever thought about having your own TV show? And I, I said, wow. She said, you know, Mythbusters has gone off the air this, this year. And um, I was thinking that the science machine might be something that would be perfect. And I said, well, you know, I actually have thought about having, you know. And yeah. so that was, I think, in a bigger picture, I'd love to have my own television show one day. But I've always envisioned it to be something more that was animated. Okay. You know? Oh, and, and the science okay. machine was this animated character mm. for, like, a Saturday morning cartoon. Okay. And um, her, her, her thoughts were more aligned around something that was for adults. Okay. And oh, so okay. the wig would be gone and the, the lab coat would be gone, oh. the same energy, though. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, okay. I'm still open to that, okay. but... Uh, you know, I've always envisioned having a cartoon and kids waking up every okay. morning yeah. seeing the science machine. Yeah, I would love that. And I was about to say, she beat us to it because, you know, Bisley's TV Network is, wheels are already turning. So we'll, we'll, we'll slip it in there, too, and see what we can do and make Absolutely. happen on this end, too. So <laughs> I'm open to that. Absolutely. Y'all heard it. So please, before we go, please tell everyone how they can get in touch with you, how they can get you into, whether it's their schools, their churches, their events that they're having. How do they make that happen? Absolutely. You can reach me, Michael Green, The Science Machine. Uh, the easiest way, you can cell phone 678-558-3969. You can certainly reach me via email, michael at scienceforeveryone.com. And everyone is just every and then the number one. Dot com and uh, you can certainly reach me on Instagram, Science for Everyone. You can see the science machine in effect, <laughs> and also on Facebook at Science for Everyone. And um, I really appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely, it's absolutely. Been a blessing we place. have had a good time. You know, we want to make this a long show this so we can have him bring in some more experiments and all of that. So, like I said, we'll be talking to him um, <laughs> right here. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today. Absolutely, I appreciate absolutely, it. everyone. I hope that you've had a great time. This has been our most lively uh, show yet. Make sure that you go back and watch it again at www.bizlinks.tv. Tell other people about it. Make sure we want everyone watching this show and so that you can also help those students out there grow and just get more excited about science and math and all of the other wonderful, wonderful industries that are out there and see what the possibilities are. Make sure you check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash bizlinkstv. Share it. Share it. It's so important that you do that. And then give us comments as well because we want to uh, share that with our guests also. Then go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash bizlinkstv. Make sure you subscribe. Give us some thumbs up. We want to make sure that you get the information and the notices when the episodes are coming out. We hope you took a lot of great notes today. I'm Pamela Alexander with BizLinks TV Network on Location, exposing your business to the world. <laughs>